Therefore, it is now time for a question period. The Leader of Her Majesty's Loyal Opposition. Mr. Speaker, uh, my question is for the Premier. Does the Premier believe that it's appropriate for ministers to fundraise from stakeholders with active files from within their respective ministries? Yes or no, is that conduct appropriate? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, and I do appreciate the, uh, the member opposite's uh, newfound interest in this issue. I think we can all agree. I think we can all agree that there's a need to raise money in order to campaign and to fund the democratic process. I've been clear about that publicly, Mr. Speaker. Um, our government, our government plans on introducing legislation, Mr. Speaker. I have said in the fall, but Mr. Speaker, we are going to introduce that legislation in the spring. I believe that uh, we can agree that this is an important, an important issue, and there need. Thank you. Finish, please. In fact, Mr. Speaker, I had announced last June that uh, we were committed to making further changes. We will introduce legislation in this spring, Mr. Speaker, um, and I have responded to the letters of the opposition leaders. I have, uh, have asked them to, uh, to come and meet with me, Mr. Speaker, to join with me, to talk about, uh, to give some input into that legislation, Thank Mr. You. Speaker, and I look forward to that. Thank you. <laughs> The member from Prince Edward Hastings will come to order. <laughs> Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, back to the Premier. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm not asking about future conversations the Premier may have around election finance reform and whether she's actually interested or not, whether it's sincere or not. What I'm asking about is the conduct of her ministers. My question is, as leader of the Ontario Liberal Party, did the Premier allow these fundraising targets, and does she still believe they're appropriate? Is it appropriate for members of your cabinet, members of the Premier's cabinet, to have fundraising targets? The member. Thank you. Stop the clock. The uh, Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport come to order. Please. There have, uh, there's been a set of rules in place that every party in this legislature has followed, Mr. Speaker. We have followed. Uh, we have fo Member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke, come to order. And I've now decided I'm going to go after those individuals who have decided they're just going to chirp because they feel like it. Thank you. Carry on. As I've said, Mr. Speaker, uh, I've invited both, uh, both party leaders to join me for a meeting within the next few days to discuss uh, important issues and to give input into, uh, into legislation that we'll bring forward this spring. I want to give leaders time to consult with uh, their respective parties so that their feedback and input can be reflected in the legislation that we introduce, Mr. Speaker, and then that legislation will be debated. The member from Prince Edward Hastings, second time, and I'll move to warnings now. Carry on. That legislation will be debated publicly. It will go through the committee process, Mr. Speaker, and there'll be opportunities for the opposition and uh, the public to participate. And I would ask Answer. the member opposite to share their ideas with the on, with Ontarians and with Absolutely. the legislature, Mr. Speaker. We're committed to, uh, especially, the intention to transition to a ban on corporate union donation. Thank you. Final supplementary. Mr. Speaker, back to the premier. Mr. Speaker, does the Premier acknowledge that setting fundraising targets for cabinet ministers forces them to fundraise from stakeholders with active files within their respective ministries? It is impossible to avoid that ethical contradiction. Mr. Speaker, will the Premier do something about this? Mr. Speaker, again, I go back to my initial comment, which is I think everyone in this uh, legislature agrees that there is a need to raise money in order to run camp campaigns. I don't think anyone, anyone would uh, believe that only wealthy, only the wealthy should be able to run for office, Mr. Speaker. There has to be a contribution and a participation by other people and other organizations in, uh, in fundraising. There has been a set of rules in place, Mr. Speaker. We have determined, and some time ago, that there needed to be changes. We have started to make changes. The Minister of the Environment and Climate Change is warned. The member from Renfrew-Nipissing-Pembroke is warned. 
Carry on. In, in fact, Mr. Speaker, we've already undertaken initiatives to make elections more accountable and, and transparent. In 2007, we introduced third-party advertising rules for the first time, Mr. Speaker, and introduced real-time disclosure for political donations, which, as the member will know, other provinces are just catching Answer. up with. We know there need to be further changes. I look forward to the input from the opposition, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Your question, the Leader of the Opposition. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Premier. Mr. Speaker. Has a stakeholder with active files before any ministry been asked or made to feel obligated by the Premier, a minister, a member of her staff, or a member of the Ontario Liberal Party to raise funds for the Ontario Liberal Party in order to obtain a meeting and approval or a policy change, yes or no? The member from Newmarket Aurora is, is warned. Carry on. Mr. Speaker, the, uh, the exchanges that I have with Ontarians all across the province, whether in a fundraising context or not, Mr. Speaker, are about gleaning the best ideas that we can so that we can write policy in government that reflects the needs of the people of Ontario, Mr. Speaker. That is the intention and that is the sole purpose for my exchanges, the exchanges of my members. The member from Stormont, Glen, 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 uh, Stormont, Dundaska and Glary is warned. Finish, please. You know, if you look at some of the major... Oh, sorry. If you do not understand my resolve, it's very clear. Stop heckling. Carry on. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as I said publicly uh, this past week, you know, if you look at uh, many of the major initiatives that we have uh, undertaken in this House, Mr. Speaker, whether it's increasing minimum wage, the poverty reduction strategy, the uh, investments Absolutely. in the investments in uh, personal support workers and in early childhood educators, developmental Answer. support workers, Mr. Speaker, those are those are initiatives that have taken place because of feedback that we've heard from people around the province. That absolutely Thank nothing. You to do with anything Thank you supplementary Mr. Speaker back to the premier that was a lot of spin and talk for a yes and no question so I will be more specific on December 7th the ministers of finance and energy took part in a fundraising dinner hosted by the people that ran the sale of Hydro 1 much of the Hydro One syndicate was in attendance, a syndicate that made over $29 million from the sale of Hydro One. Further to that, the dinner raised a reported $165,000 for the Liberal Party. That seems to me like a thank you dinner. Mr. Speaker, did the ministers pressure the companies to host? The Minister of Economic Development, uh, Employment and Infrastructure is warned. Carry on. Mr. Speaker, the other side appears sensitive in, in the face of facts. Did the ministers pressure the companies to host and attend this dinner in exchange Question. for being given the right to sell Hydro One? A bad deal, by the way, for the people of Ontario. Thank you. You it, please. You it, please. Thank you, Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, um, as, I, uh, as I have said many times, the, uh, the sole purpose of interacting with people in the province, and my, my experience of fundraising, Mr. Speaker, is that many of the people who give money to one party actually give money to all the parties, Mr. Speaker, because they're, those conversations, I assume, I assume, Mr. Speaker, that those, those conversations that we have about policy are the same conversations that, uh, that the opposition parties would want to have, Mr. Speaker, so that they can be informed by, uh, by the expertise of people who are in the field. I assume that that is uh, the reality, Mr. Speaker, on the other side of the House. That is certainly the reality on this side of the House. Thank you. Final supplementary. Mr. Speaker, back to the Premier. Since I can't get an answer on the thank you dinner from the Hydro One sale, let's talk about the overpayment for renewable energy, energy that could have been produced at a much lower rate if they did not hand out 20-year contracts to their Liberal friends at an additional cost of $9.2 billion to the people of Ontario. Consequentially, it seems that wind company after wind company donate to the Liberal Party coffers every year. Mr. Speaker. Did any of these companies that received wind contracts just happen to attend the $6,000 plate dinner with the Minister of Energy on March 10th? Yes or no? Did the individuals that received contracts attend that dinner? 
Mr. Speaker, the, the member opposite can get lists of who donates to our party, Mr. Speaker. In real time, Mr. Speaker, those lists are available. I look forward. You know, I look forward to the policy initiative on the, from the uh, other side of the house, Mr. Speaker, that suggests that what we should do is bring back coal in this province. That suggests that somehow, that somehow renewable energy and a clean, clean energy grid is not in the best interest of. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm not waiting for the last person to say something. Speaker, I would just say to the, uh, to the leader of the, uh, the opposition that if that's not the plan and he doesn't approve of what we have done in terms of a clean electricity grid, I would suggest that he tell us that he's not going Answer. to bring back coal, Mr. Speaker, that that is not the agenda that he's going to put forward. Thank you. New question, the leader of the third party. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Every voter in Ontario should have an equal voice, but Ontarians are concerned that their voice won't be heard by their government unless they write a big cheque. It's time to stop the undue influence, Speaker, that big money is having on politics in this province. And my question is to the Premier, does she agree? Well, again, Mr. Speaker, I appreciate the newfound interest on the part of the third party in this. We have for some time said that there needed to be changes, Mr. Speaker. We, uh, we have, in fact, brought forward changes. And as I said to the Leader of the Opposition, we, uh, we intend to bring forward legislation in this spring. I have said publicly in the fall, but we're going to move that up, Mr. Speaker, because I agree, I agree with, the, with the contention that people in the province need to have a good, long opportunity to, for input, Mr. Speaker. If we bring forward legislation, Legislation in the spring. There can be a, a good consultation with the public on that legislation. In advance of that, I look forward to meeting with the leaders of the opposition so that they can bring forward their ideas as that legislation uh, goes to, uh, to completion of drafting, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Thank you. Speaker, I did receive the letter, the response, uh, the Premier's response to my letter, agreeing to meet with me and the leader of the other opposition party, and we're looking forward to that meeting, Speaker, but it shouldn't be the case that opposition parties uh, provide input and the Premier makes the decisions. That's why I will be calling on the Premier to establish a process, Speaker, a process that's undertaken outside of this legislature, headed by Ontario's chief electoral officer. Officer, because I don't think that these decisions should be in the hands of a single political party. They should be the, in the hands of Ontarian Speaker. So will this Premier agree to set up a process that engages all political parties and broader civil society in order to fix our broken system? Thank you. So, Mr. Speaker, you know, I, I understand the need for the public to have an opportunity to comment on and to give us input. Mr. Speaker, that's why we we have moved up our intention to introduce legislation from the fall to the spring. Yep. There will be a good opportunity for uh, lots of input to the uh, to the legislation, Mr. Speaker, uh, in the committee process. You know, it's pretty clear to me, Mr. Speaker, that uh, we need to move to ban corporate and union donations. Yep. That, to me, I think is not a question at this point. I think it's clear uh, if we look at what's happening in other jurisdictions, including at the federal level, Mr. Speaker, that's something that. Uh, that we are going to do. So, uh, what I'm interested in. The member from Dufferin Caledon is warned. Carry on. In is hearing from the uh, the opposition leaders are what on what they think the transition should be to that, Mr. Speaker. Yes, it took a number of years at the federal level to get to the point that they're at now. I'd like to know from the uh, opposition leaders where they Thank think you. how that transition should work in Ontario. Yeah. Speaker, I don't believe that changing the way political parties fund campaigns should be up to any single political party. Will this premier agree? Will this Premier agree that this process should be very broad, but should also include parties with significant support in the last election, whether or not they have representation in this legislature? Thank you. Well, Mr. 
Speaker, if the uh, leader of the uh, third party is asking whether Mike Schreiner from the uh, from the Green Party should be allowed to take part in the process, absolutely. You know, if we have a public process with legislation that can be amended, that can uh, where we can get input on, Mr. Speaker, the public can take part in that process. That's how that's how legislation works, Mr. Speaker. So I, what I'm proposing is that the leaders of the opposition parties work with their folks, work with their uh, parties, bring forward to me in our meeting some proposals about what they'd like to see in the legislation. We draft the legislation, Mr. Speaker, and then that legislation becomes the uh, the grist for the public discussion, Mr. Speaker, and we can have a broad public discussion about where we should go. But there are some givens. I think that it is quite clear that banning union and corporate donations Answer. is where we need to go, Mr. Speaker, and so I would look forward to their uh, advice on how we would make a transition to that, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The the Thank you very much, Speaker. My next question is also for the Premier. No, people in, um, in Ontario should feel confident that politics in this province is not under the undue influence of big money. Bottom line. And as I've said, changing how all political parties fundraise shouldn't be up to just one political party speaker. And if we are going to give people the confidence in the system they deserve, then these decisions shouldn't be up to just politicians. Speaker, does this premier agree that the chief electoral officer should take the lead role and include representatives of academia, civil society, business? And labor. Well, Mr. Speaker, it makes me wonder what the leader of the third party thinks happens at committee uh, uh, consultations, yes. Mr. Speaker. When I when I sat on committees as a regular part of my job as an MPP for three years, I heard the most intelligent, the most thorough analysis of issues. When we talked about whether it was health care or whether it was electricity, we heard a very full range of delegations and input from people across the province. That's what I know happens at committee. Mr. Speaker, that's why I fully expect that as this legislation uh, goes out, Mr. Speaker, once we've had the input from the uh, the opposition parties, I fully expect that there will be a very, very complete discussion around the province from academics, from community leaders, Mr. Speaker, from people who are part of unions, from people who are part of corporations who want to Answer. have a role and want to have their say in uh, in that political discussion. I look forward to that, Mr. Thank Speaker. You. I welcome it. Supplementary. We don't. Uh, I don't think we need to tell the premier what happens at committee. The Liberal majority shuts down the opinions of the opposition pretty much all the time. Speaker. Uh, but look, but look, getting big money on a serious note, Speaker. Getting big money out of Ontario's politics is a pretty obvious first step. But it can't be the only step, Speaker. This shouldn't be about how we make our democracy. Rather, this should be about how we make our entire democracy more fair, and not just about dealing with only the issues that are getting the highlight of attention right now. So, does the Premier agree that this needs to be a comprehensive and open process, and not one that just benefits the Liberal Party? Well, Mr. Speaker, I think that this process can only benefit the democratic system and can only benefit the people of Ontario. That is the purpose of the democratic process in this province, Mr. Speaker. That is the purpose of government, which is not separate from the people of the, of the province, but is part of the way our society works. So, Mr. Speaker, the leader of the third party may want to denigrate big money, as she calls it. I don't know what she means by that. I don't know if she's talking about the money from teachers. Is she talking about the money from teachers? Federations, Mr. Speaker, or is she only talking about money from the private sector? Because the reality. In some, uh, in, in some cases, some people, even when warned, uh, maybe that's not enough. Finish, please. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, we have all been operating a, under a single set of rules. Yep. Those rules are going to change, and I look forward to the input from the leaders of the opposition parties Answer. on what they think should be in that legislation, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Final supplementary. 
Speaker, I'm going to end my questioning this morning with a, with a pretty fundamental question to this Premier, because I think it's important that we understand whether or not she has an intention to make this process open and transparent. Will the Premier commit to an open process that's headed by Ontario's chief electoral officer with representatives from all political parties, academia, business, labour and civil society, in order to ensure that the people of Ontario can feel confident about their electoral system and how it is funded. Mr. Speaker, I, what I would say to the leader of the third party is that I am committed to an open process, Mr. Speaker. I am committed to making sure that we get input from every corner of this province, from anyone who wants to give us input, starting with the leaders of the opposition parties. But, Mr. Speaker, I think there are some fundamental directions that have been established for some time in this legislature. Certainly, on our part, on this side of the House, we believe that there are some pretty clear directions that we need to go in. Uh, one of them is the banning of corporate and union donations. I would love to hear from the leaders of the uh, opposition parties how they think that transition should happen, Mr. Speaker, and any other issues that they think should be included in legislation that can then be broadly and fully publicly debated. Thank you. Your question, the member from Dufferin Caledon. Well, after 13 years in power, that's quite an epiphany. My question is for Who, the please? Treasury Board of the uh, Treasury Board President. Thank you. Speaker, has a stakeholder with active files before this minister been asked by the minister, a member of her staff, or a member of the Ontario Liberal Party to raise funds for this minister or the Ontario Liberal Party in order to obtain a meeting, an approval, or policy change? Thank you. <laughs> President of the uh, uh, Speaker, uh, we obviously know where this is going, and what I can tell you is that I meet with people every single day with a variety of opinions about what we need to do to make Ontario better. It's part of my daily job. I bet it's part of your daily job as well. All of us in this House regularly meet with people who have expertise, who have ideas. I listen to them, and we develop public policy on the basis of what is best for the people of this province. Thank you. Supplementary. I didn't hear no, so I'll try again. Speaker, has the stakeholder with active files before this minister been made to feel obligated to raise funds for this minister or the Ontario Liberal Party by the minister, a member of his or her staff, or a member of the Ontario Liberal Party in order to obtain a meeting, an approval, or policy change? Excuse me, stop the clock. The, uh, the deputy house leader is warned. Finish, please. You know, Speaker, um, I think every single person in this uh, House ran for office because we want to make this province better. That's what we're doing. Uh, the member opposite says she's never fundraised. Yes. That's hard to imagine. It might be true. It's hard to imagine. But, you know, Speaker, we made changes. We, this party, the government party, made changes to require real-time uh, public um, disclosure. disclosure of donations. That is a very important part of the transparency agenda of this government. Anyone can go online at any time and see who is making donations to what party speaker. I, I encourage uh, people who are watching at home or people even in this house to actually look and see who is making those donations. Stop the clock. While I definitely understand the thrust and parry of this place and the idea is to allow for some of the steam to be let loose, I just want to remind people, when I say you are warned, the next time I speak to you, you will be named. Just to be clear. And there are a few people that are on the edge now. You wrap up sentence, please. Speaker, we believe that the transparency that we brought into uh, donations is the right thing to do. We also think it's Answer. time to make the next step, and as you heard, we'll be making changes very soon. Thank you. New question, the member from Bramley, Gore Malton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the media are asking about the legality of how cabinet ministers are raising Who's money. The question, to, the please. question is to the premier. Okay. The media are asking questions about the legality of how cabinet ministers are raising money for the Ontario Liberal Party. Now, the question is: Has the premier done her due diligence? Has has she taken steps to ensure that assurances have been made very clear from her ministers that their actions are beyond question and, in fact, legal? Yes. 
Kilt supplementary. Given that, in addition, questions are being asked about how cabinet ministers are raising money from organizations that have an interest in the decisions that these ministers themselves make, I'm sure the Premier wants to know that there is absolutely no question about the legality of how this money is being raised. So my question to the Premier is this. Can the Premier tell Ontarians who she's asked to investigate whether these allegations are true, and will she make this report public? Thank Mr. You, Speaker, Premier. as I have said many times, um, we all operate in this House, uh, we all operate under a certain set of rules. Those rules have been in place for a number of years, Mr. Speaker, and I can only assume that everyone uh, on the other side of the House follows them. We are absolutely committed to following those rules, Mr. Speaker. I have said, and we have been working on changes already, Mr. Speaker. We intend to bring forward legislation in the spring that will allow for a, a full public discussion of uh, changes that we need to make. But I think it's pretty clear, Mr. Speaker, that some fundamentals need to change. We need to move towards uh, uh, corporate and Union, uh, a ban on corporate and union donations, Mr. Speaker. I think that is very, very clear. And so I look forward to input from the, uh, the leaders of the opposition, from their parties, as we draft legislation and then we take it out for, uh, for pu Answer. full public discussion, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. New question. New question. The uh, member from, excuse me, the member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. Mr. Speaker, as a stakeholder with active files before this minister, has a stakeholder with active files before this minister been asked by the minister, a member of his or her staff, or a member of the Ontario Liberal Party to raise funds for this minister or the Ontario Liberal Party in order to obtain a meeting, an approval, or policy change? Good Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Health and Long-Term Care. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, as my critic knows, uh, I take uh, my job as Minister of Health very, very seriously, and an important part of that job is to make sure that I interact with and discuss and get the best possible advice from literally hundreds of individuals around this province on a regular basis. Uh, we have one of the best health care systems because we have some of the best, the best health care providers and experts. And, so an important part of my job is to interact. I interact with many, many people uh, over the course of a regular day uh, while we're sitting, Mr. Speaker, uh, and I've had opportunities uh, to do that on an ongoing basis. As all members of this legislature, I believe, uh, engage in fundraising activities. When I engage in fundraising activities, Mr. Speaker, I do that according to the rules that are in place. Answer. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's, it's easy to note that we didn't hear a straight no to that uh, question. But back to the minister, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, has a stakeholder with active files before this minister been made to feel obligated to raise funds for this minister or the Ontario Liberal Party by the minister, a member of his or her staff, or the member of the Ontario Liberal Party in order to obtain a meeting, an approval, or policy change? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the member knows that's not how it works, Mr. Speaker. But what I'm very proud of, Mr. Speaker, is long before the progressive conservatives first raised this issue today, Mr. Speaker, yeah, yeah. long before the NDP first raised this issue today, our Premier has been engaging in a process, which she's outlined, where changes, fundamental changes to the way of uh, donation. The member from Prince Edward Hastings is warned. Carry on. Long before it was raised for the first time today by these, or in the last days since uh, media attention has been drawn to this issue, long before that, this Premier has recognized that important changes can and should be made. Mr. Speaker, she has indicated that in the foreseeable future she will be introducing those changes. I look forward to seeing those. Answer. And I look forward to getting the good advice from the members opposite on how we can further strengthen yeah. those Thank rules. You. Your question, the member from Kitchener, Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. Does the Minister of Finance see any issues with asking the companies that he hired and paid to sell off Hydro One to attend his fundraiser dinner and donate thousands of dollars to the Liberal Party of Ontario? Good question. Thank you, Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, um, again, and as the Premier has explained, it's interesting that the NDP, who received 
funds and do fundraisers like the like the progressive conservatives we all abide by the rules in this house as we should to enable us to support our campaigns and let me be clear my priority is around policy, initiating the uh, concerns of Ontarians. That's why the document and the budget is one of the most progressive that we've had in history, talking about the things that matter to Ontarians. That's my priority. That's what drives me, and that's what I care about, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's, it's been reported that the Minister of Finance has a quota, and he needs to raise half a million dollars for the Whoa. Ontario Liberal Party. That's a lot of money. Has the minister ever discussed his quota with the Premier of the province of Ontario? Actually, I haven't. I haven't discussed with the Premier. What I do discuss with the Premier are issues around policy, the preparation of the budget, the concerns that we share as a government to support the policies that are important to the people of Ontario. That is what we talk about, and that is what initiates. The member opposite, who also fundraises, also does the very same thing as the rest of us to support her campaigns. That is a reality that we have as the, as the rules pertain to it. I look forward and we welcome any opportunities from the opposition to support the Premier in her initiative to reform the system. We welcome it. We're open to it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Education. Ensuring students receive the best possible education across Ontario is our government's top priority. Ontario has a lot to be proud of in terms of student achievement, thanks in large part to our great educators and our staff. Our schools are recognized across the country and around the world for excellence in education, and this is something we are extremely proud of. Minister, this morning you announced the renewed math strategy to help students across the province become better learners. Speaker, through you to the minister, what is the Ontario government doing to raise student achievement in mathematics? Thank you. Minister of Education. Thank you, and uh, thank you to the member who I suspect uses her math skills every time she plans a cycling route across the province. Uh, but to, uh, to uh, talk about renewed math, supporting effective learning and teaching in mathematics has been identified as a top priority for Ontario schools. This morning, I was proud to announce that we are dedicating more than $60 million to help support students across the province achieve better results results in math. Math is a critical requirement for the jobs of today and tomorrow. The renewed math strategy is informed by research and lessons learned from the education sector itself. It focuses on the needs of students, their families, educators and schools, while encouraging Answer. the shared responsibility to support student learning. The strategy also supports our renewed vision for Ontario uh, education with uh, Thank you. in math. Supplementary. Thank you, Minister. We are extremely proud of the investments made towards education. It is important that we will continue to focus on improving the achievement of all students in mathematics because it not only helps to enhance their full potential, but it contributes to our economic strategy by ensuring a skilled workforce. In fact, that skilled workforce is just one of the reasons Ontario leads North America in terms of foreign direct investment. And so I'm pleased to hear that the students in my riding of Burlington will have better supports in place when it comes to mathematics. Minister, can you please tell this House what types of supports and opportunities you and our government will be providing as part of the renewed math strategy? Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Minister. Yes, and speakers, starting next September, key elements of the renewed math strategy will be introduced, including a minimum of 60 minutes each day of protected learning time for effective mathematics instruction and assessment for students in grades 1 to 8, up to three math lead teachers in all elementary schools, coaching for principals of select secondary schools to lead improvement in math among their students, support for learning at home through parent resources that provide helpful tips and information on the math curriculum, better access to online math resources and math supports such as homework help or SOS devoir, math support for math grades 6 to 9 outside the school day, and finally opportunities Answer. for educators to deepen their knowledge in math learning, teaching and leading, including a dedicated math professional development day to further Thank the you. school improvement. 
Question, the member from Oxford. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Mr. Speaker, has any stakeholder with active files before this minister been asked by the minister, a member of his staff or a member of the Ontario Liberal Party, to raise funds for this minister or the Ontario Liberal Party in order to obtain a meeting, an approval, or a policy change? Thank you. No. Thank you. Supplementary. Well, Mr. Mr. Speaker, uh, my question back to the minister, Mr. Speaker, has any stakeholder with active files before this minister been made to feel obligated to raise funds for this minister or the Ontario Liberal Party by the minister, a member of his staff or a member of the Ontario Liberal Party in order to obtain a meeting, an approval or a policy change? No. Thank you. New question. The member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question to the Premier. The Minister of Energy told the Ottawa citizen that he didn't have any ethical issues with using his ministerial portfolio to raise money, but he told the Globe and Mail that he wanted reform. Can the Premier tell us if the Energy Minister is okay with the current ministerial quota system or not? Premier. Mr. Speaker. I don't, you know, I don't know how the uh, the NDP operates. I don't know what their team ethic is, Mr. Speaker. I don't know how well they work together. But here's the thing: we know, as a party, that we have to fundraise in order to run our campaigns and do our work, Mr. Speaker. And we're a team, and everybody does their bit, Mr. Speaker. That's how it works on this side of the house. I have no idea how it works in the church basements of the NDP, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Has the Minister of Energy ever discussed his quota with the Premier, and did he ever tell the Premier he wanted to see campaign finance reform? Mr. Speaker, I have not talked with my ministers about quotas. We are part of a team, Mr. Speaker, and the only reason I used the church basement, Mr. Speaker, is that the leader of the third party was suggesting that somehow the fundraising done by the NDP was somehow more pure than the fundraising done by everyone else. The fact is, Mr. Speaker, we are all we are all working in the best interest of the people of Ontario to talk to people around this province, to run our parties, Mr. Speaker, so that there can be a political dialogue as part of our democracy. There has been a set of rules. We are going to change those rules. I look forward to input from the opposition parties, Mr. Speaker. Be seated, please. please. New question. The member from uh, Newmarket Aurora. Speaker, uh, uh, my question is to the Minister of Transportation. Speaker, I was at the 20th Annual Newmarket Home Show over the weekend and had a number of constituents ask me about changes to the Electric Vehicle Incentives Program. Uh -huh. Perhaps it was the, uh, the launch of the new Tesla vehicle yeah. that sparked this interest, but actually I believe it's uh, my constituents' genuine concern for the environment. I understand the minister recently announced some changes to the Electric Vehicle Incentive Program. Mr. Speaker, can the minister tell members of this House more about these changes and what Ontarians can expect to see under the new program? Thank you. Minister of Transportation. Thanks very much, Speaker. I want to begin by thanking the member from Newmarket Aurora not only for his question, but for taking a very keen interest in issues relating to transportation and how we modernize some of these important programs. As many members of this legislature will recall, Speaker, our government launched our first electric vehicle incentive program back in 2010, a program which has provided incentives for the purchase of nearly 5,000 electric vehicles in Ontario. I was very pleased to join with Premier Wynne, with the Minister of the Environment and the Minister of, the Econom of Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure in February to announce some changes to this program. Changes, Speaker, that will help make it even easier for Ontarians to switch to an electric vehicle. Our new modernized program increases the current incentive range for e-vehicles to between $6,000 and $10,000. It also provides an opportunity for an additional $3,000 incentive for vehicles with larger battery capacities, and the program speaker will also give up to $1,000 for the purchase and installation of Answer. chargers for private home and business use. Speaker, our government continues to make investments that will help us secure a healthy, clean, and prosperous, low-carbon low future for all Ontarians. Supplementary. 
Thank you, uh, Speaker. I want to uh, uh, thank the minister for his response. I know that those living in Newmarket Aurora uh, are glad to hear about these changes. In fact, uh, this initiative actually builds on our government's December 2015 announcement that an additional $20 million from Ontario's Green Investment Fund will go toward creating a network of fast-charging public EV sta uh, charging stations. But, Mr. Speaker, this is only one of the progressive investments we're making in the vehicles we drive. I understand in January we also launched a new automated, automated vehicles pilot. Can, uh, Mr. Speaker, can the minister please tell, mem please tell members of this House more about this new pilot and how it will change the way Ontarians drive? Thank you. Thanks, very, thanks very much, Speaker. I thank the member again for his follow-up question. He is quite right, Speaker. On January 1st, our government launched a new pilot to allow the testing of automated vehicles on Ontario's roads and highways. Speaker, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers has forecasted that by 2040, autonomous vehicles could account for 75 per cent of all vehicles on North American roads. Speaker, that is a potential massive shift with respect to how we live and drive. And that's why I'm so proud to see Ontario leading the charge on this new and innovative technology. Ontario is the very first province in Canada to permit the testing of automated vehicles and related technology on road. This means that we are the first to enable nearly 100 companies and institutions involved in the sector to conduct research and development in Ontario rather than competing jurisdictions. Yes, Speaker, this is another example of our government's commitment to making those investments that will ensure that Ontario remains a global leader in this Thank sector. You. Thank you very much. Question, the member from Thank you and good morning, Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Finance. Speaker, has a stakeholder with active files before this minister been asked by the minister, a member of his staff, or a member of the Ontario Liberal Party to raise funds for this minister or the Ontario Liberal Party in order to obtain a meeting, an approval, or a policy change? Thank you. Minister of Finance. Yeah, no, Mr. Speaker, but I do see a great list from the Conservative Party, which includes very much those very stakeholders. But no, I have not had that pressure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Speaker. Back to the Minister. While we all may raise funds, Speaker, this Minister is selling this Minister is selling access to meeting. Come to order, please. Thank you. Thank you uh, speaker, uh, while we may all fundraise, it's this minister who gives out contracts and it sells access to the government. Speaker. So my question: Has the state? Excuse me. Stop the clock, please. Um, I'm going to have to uh, ask the uh, member to withdraw uh, because of what he said. So withdraw. I withdraw, Speaker. You may finish the question. The stakeholder with active files before this minister been made to feel obligated to raise funds for this minister or the Ontario Liberal Party by the minister, a member of his staff, or a member of the Ontario Liberal Party in order to obtain a meeting, an approval, or a policy change. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I've already said that that's not the case, but maybe be clear. What we are concerned about is this document, the work we do to put policies in place to provide for increased to minimum wage, free tuition for those students that are most vulnerable, to ensure that we support those with autism, increase funding for hospitals and education, support infrastructure projects, and ensure that we have a fair society by breaking the cycle of poverty. All those things, Mr. Speaker, they have voted against. They have voted against the very principles that are important to the people of Ontario. That's our priority, nothing else. Do you see it, please? Thank you. New question, the member from Temiskamee Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. The Premier has acknowledged that former Cabinet Minister John Garrison complained to her about his fundraising quotas. Will the Premier tell Ontarians what she said to John Garrison when he complained about the ethics of Cabinet Ministers being given fundraising quotas? 
Well, Mr. Speaker, yeah. what I have said, uh, what I've said publicly, and the uh, the member opposite can uh, look at my comments from last week. What I've said is that uh, many of the comments that uh, that John Garrison made become part of the discussion that we're having right now, Mr. Yeah. Speaker, and they have fed into my conviction that we do need to make changes. Yeah. That moving to uh, ban corporate and union donations is uh, is the direction we need to go, Mr. Speaker. And as I've said, I look forward to input from the uh, opposition parties, and then I look forward to a full public debate, Mr. Speaker, as legislation goes to committee. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. The Premier has acknowledged that John Garrettson complained about using his ministerial portfolio to raise money for the Ontario Liberal Party. Other ministers are calling for changes. How many other ministers have complained to the Premier about having to use the ministerial portfolios to raise money for the Liberal Party? Mr. Speaker, well, that, as has been said, that is not how it works. We are a team. We raise money, Mr. Speaker. We raise money to do the work of the party, as I expect the NDP and the Conservatives both do, Mr. Speaker. And we all operate within a set of rules. And those rules, Mr. Speaker, are going to change. I look forward to input from the uh, the opposition parties, and I look forward to a full public discussion, Mr. Speaker, as legislation uh, goes out for consultation. Thank you. New question, the member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure. Wow. Minister, last January you officially launched four new streams for the Jobs and Prosperity Fund, a 10-year $2.7 billion support fund, which includes the New Economy Stream, the Food and Beverage Growth Fund, the Forestry Growth Fund, and the Strategic Partnership Stream. And as you've said before, we are focusing our investments in order to help smaller businesses scale up, to continue to strengthen our commitment to innovation, create high-value jobs, and to target key industries that will act as our anchor investments in Ontario. But at the same time, there have been critics who suggested that we are picking winners and losers and they have expressed concerns about transparency of our investments. Mr. Speaker, could the minister Question. please inform this legislature if those concerns are legitimate? Thank you. Minister of Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me begin by saying how proud we are of the investments we've made in our business support initiatives through the years. In fact, I want all Ontarians to be aware of each of those investments because they've proven to be hugely successful in creating jobs and attracting investment to our province. Most of our investments are already available online, and we welcome any public interest in those important initiatives. In all, We've invested $2.8 billion since 2004, leveraging $29 billion in private sector investment and creating and retaining 160,000 jobs. As for, as for picking winners and losers, Mr. Speaker, we are picking winners. We're, we're investing in growth firms, in innovation leaders, and we're driving to compete globally. That's what you need to do to compete, Mr. Speaker, Answer. in today's competitive global economy. We're, we're trying to help our fast runners run faster so we can bring, build an economy we can be proud to pass on to our kids and grandkids. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank the minister for his answer. It's very encouraging to learn that there are measures in place to ensure transparency and accountability for all our businesses and as we're providing strong supports. Mr. I know that you've been very busy lately announcing partnerships across the province of Ontario in Waterloo, Ottawa, Markham, Brantford, London, Hamilton, and other areas of the province. Uh, in my own community of Kitchener-Waterloo, my constituents were very excited to welcome new jobs at Sandvine, an innovation leader that is going global, and I know that we were very happy to host both the Minister and the Premier at a recent tour in my community. Mr. Speaker, could the Minister please tell this House about that visit and other companies that we have been partnering Question. with lately? Thank you. Minister. I'd be delighted to, Mr. Speaker. I want to share a few of our recent investments with the Legislature. We partnered with Mitsui High Tech, an advanced manufacturing company, producing parts for electric vehicles, creating 48 new highly skilled jobs. And you're riding, Mr. Speaker, of Brantford, 
Our $2 million investment leveraged $38 million in private sector investment. We partnered with Bayless Medical to support a research and manufacturing expansion in Mississauga. We invested $4.2 million, leveraging $32.5 million in private sector investment, creating 84 jobs and retaining 194 more. We also partnered with Sandvine, as the member indicated, in KW, an ICT innovation success story here in Ontario. We invested $15 million, leveraging $169 million in private sector investment, creating 75 yes, new jobs, retaining 267. These are good investments contributing to, in all, 160,000 jobs created Thank and retained you. here in the province of Ontario. New question, the member from Bruce Gray on sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. If sincere, I wonder why the Premier and her government did not make the changes when the electoral officer, Greg Asenza, has raised this twice in this legislature during their report, and myself, I've raised this private member's bill last October, and my colleague, Rick Nichols, raised it before me. So if they were truly here, here. sincere, if they truly felt this was unfair, Mr. Speaker, they'd have already had legislation changes in. They wouldn't be yep. dragging it out so they could continue to fundraise over the next year, probably by the time they get it done to their benefit, Mr. Speaker. So I ask the, the Premier, are you really sincere, and why is it not already in legislation like the rest of the provinces of Canada and the federal government? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. So I've said we're bringing the legislation in this spring, Mr. Speaker. We're going to uh, we're going to have a public discussion about the uh, about the legislation, Mr. Speaker. But as I have said, make no mistake, there will be a new set of rules. That doesn't mean that people will stop having to raise funds, Mr. Speaker. The reality is, in order for our democracy to function, parties need to be able to work with, communicate with, run campaigns, work with the public. That is that is part of our democratic process. So there will be new rules in place, Mr. Speaker. I look forward to the input from the opposition and from the third party. Thank you. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, it's a matter of trust. This was brought to this legislature by an officer of this legislature that said you need to make changes two reports ago, Mr. Speaker. This is yet again, we've got caught, we've got the heat turned up by the media, and now the Premier and her cabinet are saying, oh, we need to do something, but we need time. If you were truly sincere, there are other provinces that we could borrow their legislation today, Mr. Speaker, if she was really sincere. We could already have this. We do need to get to a select committee so we actually have some say. We're very concerned that they would just take this like they have the Green Energy Act, for example, and ram it through under their provisions, Mr. Speaker. But we need to ask about the sincerity. We need to ask about how much insurance terms trust this Premier and her government to truly make changes. Mr. Speaker, we want to ensure that this government will actually do the right thing for a change and ensure that there is fairness in all of this Question. legislation. Mr. Speaker, I want to ask the Premier, have you held any fundraisers? With, with sponsors in the room, with donors in the room that could truly influence legislation? Thank you. Thank you. Very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, as the member knows full well, we uh, we announced last June that we're committed to addressing the uh, recommendations that have been made by the uh, the chief electoral officer, Mr. Speaker. Elect uh, recommendations that were made on the 2014 uh, election. We are we are committed to that. We said we were, and we're moving forward, Mr. Speaker. But I have to say that uh, when I read in the press that the uh, the opposition was looking for a select committee on top of bringing legislation forward and having a public discussion as a result of committee hearings. Mr. Speaker, the first thing that came to my mind is that they actually want to stall. They actually want a longer process, Mr. Speaker, and that's unacceptable. The status quo is not acceptable. We're bringing forward legislation this spring, and we're going to move forward and make those changes, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Your question, the member from Windsor to come see. Thank you, Speaker, and good morning to you. My question is to the Premier. Good morning, Premier. Speaker, can the Premier explain why she believes the Liberal government should be making the decisions? about how all political parties fund campaigns and why she believes this process should not be led by Ontario's chief electoral officer. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Mr. Speaker, and I don't know if the, uh, if the member uh, heard uh, what I said to the last question. The fact is that the chief electoral officer has made recommendations. Um, some of them pertain directly to this discussion that's been happening in the public realm in the last uh, couple of weeks. Some of them go beyond that. But, Mr. Speaker, we have accepted those recommendations. We're working on them, Mr. Speaker, and we're going to be bringing forward legislation. And the fact is, Mr. Speaker, that there will be a broad and complete public consultation as we uh, bring that legislation into the public.
public realm. And, Mr. Speaker, I look forward to the input from the opposition leader and the leader of the third party after consultation with their uh, their colleagues about what they would like to see in the in the legislation, so that it can be debated publicly. I look forward to that process, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, the Premier insists that she'll take this process through committee, and as we know, she also said that the budget would reflect input from the Finance Committee's pre-budget consultations. But as we all know, the ink was drying on the budget before the committee was done hearing from the experts and Ontarians alike. We need to ensure that this process is open and isn't up to one single political party. Will the Premier agree to have this process headed by Ontario's Chief Electoral Officer? Thank you, I think I've been clear about what, uh, what the process should be going forward. I look forward to the input from the leaders of the opposition parties, Mr. Speaker. I trust that they will be uh, talking to their colleagues and that they will engage in a very uh, energetic and enthusiastic way in the public discussion that will follow as legislation goes forward, Mr. Speaker. That is, that is what is required of us. It is, it is what is necessary in order for us to uh, come to good policy decisions. And, Mr. Speaker, as I said, I think there are some very clear directions whether it's uh, from the chief electoral officer or the public debate that has uh, ensued for the last couple of weeks around the banning of corporate and union donations. We need to get on that, Mr. Speaker, and that's why we're moving the legislation up. We're going to uh, bring that legislation forward in the spring rather than in the fall, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Your question, the member from Glengarry, Prescott Russell. Thank you very much, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Community and Social Services. Minister, as you know, every day there are women across the province who experience domestic violence, and this devastating reality can affect people from any community or any walk of life. Minister, I know that your ministry provides violence against women agencies across this province with funding to support women and their children who have experienced domestic violence. These hard-working agencies, such as Maison at the Lude House and My Riding in Hawkesbury, provide vital services such as emergency shelter, counselling services and housing supports to help women and their children who require these services. But we all know that there are unique challenges experienced by shelters in rural, remote and northern communities. Speaker, through you, can the minister uh, please tell us how your ministry is uh, recognizing and helping to address these challenges? Great. Thank you, Minister of Community thank and Social you, Services. Speaker, and thank you to the member for the question. I understand he celebrated his birthday this weekend, so happy <laughs> birthday. And, uh, the government certainly takes the role of supporting women and their children who have experienced domestic violence very seriously. And I have had the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to visit some 21 VAW shelters across the province since I became minister. And I'm very aware of the unique service delivery challenges being experienced by rural, remote, and northern shelters. And that's why in January I visited the Women's Rural Resource Center of Strathroy, an area to announce that we would be establishing a rural reality. Fund. This new two-year, $1 million fund will help shelters and agencies in these communities address their local challenges. And I'm pleased to let this House know that my ministry is now welcoming applications to the Rural Realities Answer. Fund. We know this is just part of the solution. We will continue to work with the agencies in these communities. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you again, Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for that information on the Rural Realities Fund. And I understand that rural shelters and agencies were very pleased with this recent announcement. Uh, for example, I know that the chair of the Ontario Association of Interval and Transition Houses and executive director of the Leeds Grenville Interval House said that she was thrilled with the recent announcement for the Rural Realities Fund. Speaker, she commented, uh, commended our government on our commitment to improving the lives of women and girls in Ontario, and she looked forward to continued collaboration. She said that her shelter, their frontline staff, cover over 3,300 square wow. kilometres and a population of over 96,000 people, and these funds would be, uh, be used to improve their outreach and counselling services to women living with violence. Uh, speaker, through you, um, Minister, I understand that your recent announcement, uh, you also spoke about the crisis response Western. framework and uh, that will help your agencies develop coordinated plans. Uh, could you, Minister, please share with this House the work the Ministry is doing Thank on you. this file? Thank you. Sure. 
Consider the tragic shootings in Vilno last fall and the most recent shootings in Odessa last month. We know that there is more that we must do. And that is why I also announced that we would begin working with agencies, my ministry's VAW expert group, and with other ministries to develop and implement a crisis response framework. We need to work together with the VAW sector and other community partners to help identify the steps we can take to prevent these tragedies from occurring. And we will work with VAW agencies to find ways to better support them when crises do occur. The creation of the Rural Realities Fund and Crisis Response Framework were recommendations to the province from the Premier's Roundtable on Violence Against Women. Both of these initiatives support the Ontario government's goals of ending Answer. violence against women and providing better supports for survivors. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Your question. The member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Yes, uh, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of uh, Transportation. Mr. Speaker, has a stakeholder with an act of uh, files before this minister been asked by the minister, a member of his or her staff, or a member of the Ontario Liberal Party to raise funds for this minister or the Ontario Liberal Party in order to obtain a meeting in approval or policy change? Thank you. Minister of Transportation. Uh, thanks very much, Speaker. Of course, I thank the member opposite for his interest in this uh, topic. Uh, as the Premier has said repeatedly today, as have colleagues on this side of the legislature, uh, in consultation with both other party leaders and other stakeholders interested in this topic over the next number of days and weeks, Speaker, uh, there will be a modernization or an update brought to political finance reform or to political financing laws here in the province of Ontario. Speaker, I think it must be clear by now, because there have been multiple responses on this side of the legislature, of course, that we look forward to working closely in collaboration with members from both opposition parties and, ex and others external to this building, Speaker, to make sure that we get it right, which I think is of utmost importance to the people of Ontario. Thank you. Supplementary. Uh, speaker, back to the minister. Mr. Speaker, has a stakeholder with active files before this minister been made to feel obligated to raise funds for this minister or the Ontario Liberal Party? Party by the minister, a member of his or her staff, or a member of the Ontario Liberal Party, in order to obtain a meeting, an approval, or policy change. Thank you, Minister. <clears throat> Thanks very much, Speaker. So I believe I've answered that question by and large uh, with the uh, with the first response that I gave, Speaker. What's interesting to me, though, I have to say, last week uh, I know a number of people on this side of the legislature and the governing caucus uh, were out across the province of Ontario making fundamentally important announcements in a variety of communities across Ontario. Within my own area of responsibility, Speaker, I remember being last week in Wellington, Halton Hills to announce funding support for the Morrison Bypass, for example, Speaker. <clears throat> Speaker, I also remember being sta standing alongside the member from Barrie and really announcing cycling infrastructure funding, Speaker, doing the same thing in Markham, connecting links funding, Speaker. So what the finance minister said earlier today about Ontario Budget 2016, Speaker, this is what this government is focused on, yeah. building the province up, moving it forward, yeah, a stronger economy, a better quality of life, Speaker. That's what this Premier and this government are working hard on. Thanks very much, Speaker. You say it, please? You say it, please? Thank you. New question. The member from Timmins, James Bay. Well, my question is to the Premier. My leader and our caucus have put the proposal forward that the chief electoral officer be charged with looking at what changes need to happen to the fundraising rules in the province of Ontario. We know if the chief electoral office does it, it's going to be nonpartisan. It'll be an issue that the public will be involved, and we're going to come back with something that's workable. Why does the government and why does this premier refuse to go that route and instead have a process where she's going to control the outcome? And why should people have any trust in you, considering your record in fundraising? Premier. Mr. Speaker, I'm sure that the public would like to know that the, uh, the NDP and the Conservatives would bring forward suggestions on that legislation. Mr. Speaker, I said earlier that I've responded to the letters from both uh, the leader of the uh, Conservatives and the leader of the NDP. I've said I welcome a meeting with them so that they can bring forward their suggestions. And then, Mr. Speaker, we need to have a full public discussion as part of uh, the, uh, the commentary on the legislation. I think that is absolutely the way to go. Mr. Speaker, I think it's quite clear from having uh, having looked at this because this this last week was not the first time that we had thought about this mr. speaker contrary to contrary to what the uh, the member opposite may want to chuckle the fact is we have been looking at this we understand we understood that there needed to be changes mr. speaker and 
And that's why we're able to bring legislation forward this spring, Mr. Speaker, and move on it quickly. And as I say, I look forward Answer. to input from the uh, parties opposite. Thank you. There being no deferred votes, this House stands recess until 1 p.m. this afternoon.